Really cool stuff. Um, what are some of the other stuff that matters with regards to like NDG issues? Okay, I'm going to talk about a, a very serious issue that I do not have the answer to, but I think a conversation is growing and it's electric cars and NDG. People want to move towards electric cars and a lot of people don't have driveways. And the problem is how do you charge your car at home across the sidewalk? So I don't have any easy answers, you know. The borough does not want to put in you does not want to allow people to put in more and more driveways everywhere because if you get more and more driveways on these streets, you know, you act fine. The person parks on his driveway, but then there's an empty space in front of his driveway, which is still paved and is still becoming a heat island. You see what I mean? It's not good for trees either. So it's not more parking spaces is not good for the look and the heat island aspect of, of the city streets. And our, and our neighborhood is known for its beautiful trees and so forth. So that's not good. But on the other hand, we are pro electric car. So we're looking for ways to allow people to charge their cars more quickly at more places, more close to their home. So Project Moyal has worked on it. We put more and more, uh, we just announced a couple of weeks ago that we're going to put even more charging stations. That's the way we're going. But I do have some sympathies with people saying they would love to be able to charge at home. And, you know, obviously all those people out in the suburbs are getting the chance to charge at home. So. It's a tricky situation to be continued. I don't have the answer, but I am listening and, and reflecting. Yeah, that's another issue I never would have thought of one time. Um, I'm hearing it at doors. What about like the budget issue that everyone else is concerned of? Is there like anything yeah, that can I, even I, be done about that? Of course, that? I want more money for Cotonej NDG. Of, you know, it's absurd. These All these people and so many people are going on about it with their own interpretation. I'll get, on that front, I'm going to give a long historical interpretation. One thing is, it was really bad 30, 40 years ago. So things, even before I ever got elected or anything, I think there was movement in the right direction. If you look at things that did not exist in NDG or Cote 30 years ago, I mean, the Benny Sports Complex, the Benny Library, no, it did not exist. The in Cote the big sports center did not exist. 67, 67 Cote for the community groups did not exist at all. So I think that one of the things that is the history of Cote d'Ange NDG is that there were local charities and religious organizations, both and non-Catholic ones, Protestant ones in NDG and Jewish ones in Cote d'Ange, like the Jewish Public Library and the Fraser Hickson in NDG. Perfect examples. They kind of operated not with city money or government money, just as charities, religious or private charities. And they provided services to the community and over the last 30 40 years our society has become more secular it's only normal normal these society these organizations kind of went downhill their budgets went downhill they had less capacity and the city took over these functions so i'm just saying the history of why cote and ndg had maybe less city facilities than other neighborhoods one explanation is this so i'm not saying that justifies anything or in everything we have to move that the city provides these things but the city has made some progress. I mean, like I say, the Benny Library, the Benny Sports Center, that did not exist 10 plus years ago. So we're moving in the right direction. Now that is continued. I will give credit that I think to both the Code Air Administration and President Moran has continued that movement. There's been this continued, they did this big study of all the boroughs and we realized that Code Energy NDG was lacking. So again, and some other boroughs were lacking too. So budget started to move up slowly, and I'm not saying people have to be massively satisfied. I still want more, so that's okay. But I would say it slowly moving in the right direction. So theoretically, and I would say, well, here's another thing I'm going to say. All these people, if one, there's other boroughs that I would say also have an argument for being somewhat underfinanced. I'd say all the big boroughs. So the other ones are Hunsick, Rosemont Petit Petri. Uh, Park X, Villa, uh, Villa Ray, and Hushalaga uh, uh, those and us, we're the five big boroughs. And we save money by having less politicians and less directors per capita than a borough like Uchima with one mayor and four councillors and all the borough directors. So the point is, maybe we should get some of the benefit of that. that should, I mean, I'm not saying we should spend more on politicians and directors necessarily. But then if we save money by having less than them, let's have that money to spend more on, you know, garbage cleaners, tree planters, and, uh, you know, whatever else we want, uh, lifeguards at, at pools. So I'm saying it's an ongoing process. Uh, you know, let's, 
let's figure what installation we want. Do we want a new swimming pool? What is the thing we want next? Let's fight to get it, both the investment in it and then the budget, the you know, the operating budget will will be added. If we think if we find the need, let's push for it and let's get it. let's get the new skate park. Let's get it. That's so, so I would say focus more on what we want and need and the budget will follow. That's cool because it kind of like answers what like I guess my question has been to like in general. So if there's this big budget issue, what do we do as citizens, right? Because I feel like as much as we can rely on politicians, there's there's probably more a citizen can do to move a needle than maybe almost like we could arm you with the again, ammunition that you would need. Perfect. And again, citizens pushing for a new facility, proving that there's a need by a massive campaign of petitions and going to borough council and city council meetings, is gonna move things more than a bunch of people whining about it being unfair for the following reason. Kutinej and DG, say Sue Montgomery, even say Sue Montgomery and her team won the entire borough. She's unanimous, it's them. Fine, they have the complete vote here. They have a unanimous vote here. But what does that do at City Hall necessarily? I mean, it's not the attribution of the city budget to the city is voted on by the entire city council. So to constantly be saying we're unfair and we need more compared to you, the other boroughs, is only pissing off the other boroughs who are never going to vote for that. Whereas if you voice things in a more positive way, if you can sort of team up with some other boroughs who might have a similar need, maybe a bunch, a number of the big boroughs don't have enough swimming pools. A big push for swimming pools, which involves four or five boroughs together, we could all get those swimming pools and the budget will follow. There's my example. Yeah, that is a super interesting point. And then ultimately, if the citizens know what they want, which we might not know what we want, to be honest, fair point. Uh, but if we could figure out what we want and then give you be guys... Be able to prove it. You know, it has to, obviously, it can't be ridiculous. It has to be a real need and a real... yeah. And then we get we get the petitions and we go and run the gambit and I, you have to have the space to put it that's another aspect any facility you're going to put well where are you going to put it and there has to be a place and that's another problem all the inner city boroughs have tend to have a lack of space built up i'm not saying there's no spaces in ndg but uh, you know, we have to pick them carefully yeah i could see how there's not a lot it's it, there's a lot of places that's just houses for days and then you have to deal with all the residential zoning issues as i understand it because i was going like where's the venues in ndg right like i'm a, I'm a rapper i'm like where can i because i mean rapping in a park's cool but we are cognizant of the fact that we got to censor ourselves um probably got to like keep it a little more calm because otherwise we'll piss off the parent world which we really don't want to do so it's like we start going okay where the venues at and i now know there's a wheelhouse fair enough but I didn't know it existed for how small it actually physically is as a place. Not to give any disrespect to it. I plan on hitting these people up because like they exist, but like where else is there? And then I realized there's, there's really not a lot for growing ups that don't have kids. And I'm like, where's the growing up who don't have kids in NDG slash college students who are trying to solicit place to go? <clears throat> Listen, I got to have to go soon, Holden, but I'm no going to plug two things. I think I, what I said about the budget, maybe I'd like people to think about it, but now I'm going to give two clear examples of things that we did do this mandate, and that's one, buy the YMCA park. So that was a private green space only for YMCA members, and now it's a city park. So that is a gift to the people of NDG, but we've only just started. Now it's consulting about what NDGers want in that park. What exactly? More playground equipment for the kids? Maybe... Uh, you know, a water pad and more spray, water spray. I think every park in, in, in NDG, every park in the city should have water spray in these days of increasing heat. Um, you know, whatever, uh, basketball, an outdoor basketball court or not, whatever people want, more trees, of course. So that's a consultation ongoing. And then the second thing we just got, we got a huge subsidy for the indoor swimming pool at the Cary and Cosa Nautilus. So now you're talking about another problem Quinton is NDG has is aging buildings. We have infrastructure from the 20s and 30s, 100-year-old infrastructure. It's slowly wearing out. And there's a perfect example. We People love that swimming pool. We need that swimming pool. And now we've gone and got subsidies from the, the center city and other levels of government, $7 million to bring that pool up to snuff so it won't keep breaking down and it'll be good for the next 100 years. So on that note, I'm going to have to let you go, Holden. All right. It's a pleasure. 
I appreciate you coming through, Peter. It was great to have your time. Thank you to everybody watching this and just everybody in the future with all that. Make sure to go check out Peter Vickreen and stay involved with all of this stuff. And you have yourself a great day. Live long you and prosper, it. everyone. Thanks. Thanks for having me on. Have a good one. No worries, man. Take care. Thank you.